that's of course the base case for initialize initialize for initializing for initializing my answer variable given an array of distinct integer candidates and a target integer target return a list of all unique combinations where the chosen number sums to target you may return the combinations in any order the same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited number of times i see so if you have 2 3 6 and 7 as candidates and you have to make 7 you can pick 7 or you can also pick two two times which makes four and then you can pick a three and that's what the first choice represents so all the possible choices we have to return that good question not bad let's see the length is pretty small the numbers are also small and the elements are distinct okay and the target sum is less than 500 all right yeah, so uh, how would I have approached this problem is first clear with the interviewer whether I got this correct. In this case, since we already have a function, uh, it's easy to generate that clarity. Otherwise, I would have written this myself. And also, I don't like the syntax because it might be really confusing. So generally, what I do is try to make this a bit easier. So probably uh, we have to return a vector of choice and each choice is a vector of int. So I say something like using choice as a vector of int, I am returning a vector of choice. Now this adds a bit more clarity and it's easy for me as well to con communicate with the interviewer. Now I would say that, okay, uh, we have a function combination sum and it takes an input as a array, which is having our candidates. Each number can be used multiple times and I have to make this target sum and I have to return all the possible choices. The order does not matter. And uh, I mean, I can also return this as 233 three or 323. Three. I don't think that matters. Let me just check. Uh, so two combinations are unique if the frequency of at least one of the chosen numbers is different, which means that if you return this as three, two and three, even that will work. The order does not matter. The frequency matters. All right. So once I have clear cleared that out now, uh, Let's see. Um, I'm I'm getting this uh, intuition of using recursion over here, and what I'm planning to do is send a suffix of my array, and also pass in the target sum that I want to make using this suffix, and then it should return me the function should return me the number of uh, I mean the possible choices that I have to make the target sum using only that suffix of the array. Uh, which which is nothing but uh, same like this vector choice that's exactly but instead of complete vector I'm only having a suffix so this will get current index as an argument and uh, this function can be something like um, get all choices now this is the function that uh, I'm going to use and I can clearly say that the answer is nothing but get all choices when we are starting with the first index and in the world of programming zero based is what we use for arrays so i'm using the whole array and i'm trying to make the target sum and at that, this point of time it's very important that you write a comment about what this function is doing so it's returning all possible choices to make your target sum uh, by using suffix of array Cur index and so on and up to the end all right so you are using from current index up to the end of array the all numbers before current index are not being used and since i am passing zero initially so i'm using the complete array and this function will give me all possible choices now one thing over here is uh, i could have passed an array also over here instead of current index but i'm just optimizing my function because I have to create new arrays otherwise repeatedly. I don't want to do that. So it needs access to this array that we have received over here. And what we can do is use a global global variable 
something like add and before calling this we can assign candidates to add now over here we are going to write the code for this so this might look a bit tough uh, probably it's not straightforward and i love such questions because you can talk a lot with the interviewer when you're solving such questions and it has a lot of base cases a lot of corner cases and it's quite interesting to solve such problems so right now um, let me see what we can do uh, base cases i tend to handle later on base case will come later on let's try to write the main crux uh, what's happening is uh, we can use the current number multiple times so i have a current number which is r of current index now i can use it multiple times and then uh, for the rem so if i use it one time uh, i can get the other choices from something like current index plus one and then the target minus current number becomes my new target but this is when i'm using it one time so of course i can use it multiple times all right but what will this return vector of choice we may, um, let's call it other but i can use it multiple times which we have not handled and it might happen that you do not call it at all what i'm trying to say is let's have vector choice answer as empty we'll do something update that and return answer over here so there are two ways uh, to move forward right now actually there are multiple ways you do not use it at all the current number or you use it one time two time three time and so on right wow so how do you solve this now how do you handle all that that's what i'm thinking uh, all right um so i think base case would be i mean uh, it's safe to initialize answer as cur index plus one and target as it is i do not use the current number at all right so that's uh, that's of course the base case for initialize initialize for initializing for initializing my answer variable uh, but there can be multiple choices now i can choose it one time two time three time multiple times and as many times as i'm using it i can go recursively with the current index plus one and with the new target and then whatever uh, choice i have i can iterate on each choice in this list and then add the current number as many times as i have used and that becomes a valid choice right so that's uh, the main crux if it's not clear um, let me explain a bit more time so the current number can be used multiple times based on the frequency how many times we are using it we have a new target which we pass to the current index plus one so we are using the remaining suffix of the array to make the new target and then we get all possible choices from that now for every choice we insert the current number based on the frequency that we have used it so each choice needs to be populated by our current number and how many times the current number will be present in each choice the based on the frequency that uh, we are using it so uh, one way to handle that is instead of going to the next index i make it current index only and i use my current number only once so this is handling current number is not used at all and i'm using it once but since i'm not increasing my current index it allows me to reuse the current number as many times as possible because next time when this will be called we have we are on the same index the target has reduced a bit but again we will have two choices now we can stop using the current number or we can go and again use the current number again and stay on the same index so this is handling all cases and then what we can do is iterate on each choice in other and now it's very easy because the current number we are using it only once so what we have to do is c dot push underscore back um, current number and now this becomes a valid choice now c is a valid choice for my current recursive state right which is with the, when when i'm calling this now c is a valid choice to be a part of the returning answer so now i can push it to c uh, uh, to answer and return it so this looks good to me of course now we should handle base cases now base cases can be interesting if your target is less than zero it's negative it's straightforward that you do not have any valid choices because i know that the numbers are positive so that's not going to work other thing is if your target is zero 
so now you do not have any choice right but you do not have to return an empty array because this means you have no choice you have one choice and that's that you do not do anything so this should be the base case for that other than that of course if your current index becomes um, add or size so if it becomes that now you do not have any more number and your target is non zero because if it was zero you have you would have returned over here so your target is non zero and again this becomes no valid choice so there is a difference between this so this is saying no valid choice and this is saying one choice and you choose nothing so that's a valid choice uh yeah this looks good i think let's try to run it and see if we have compilation errors and other things wow that worked and again the order does not matter uh, 7 is fine 3 to 2 is fine let's try to submit this and see if it's passing or not or we are getting time limit error oh that's worked it worked that's great guys i hope this was fun um if you want to watch this video and the complete playlist refer to the video description for the link if you want to refer to the source code it's on my github you can go to github.com rachitaitr and again everything is in video description um i have this data set this algorithms repository in which i have solutions to lead code over here so i'll be pushing this to lead code you don't have to waste your time watching that but yeah i will update the github other than that i hope this was fun to watch if you are a beginner i mean this can be a bit overwhelming i would encourage you to take baby steps not try to implement the whole function at once probably it's good to answer it in parts and have multiple c out statements and try to run and see how your code is functioning what your code is doing and slowly and slowly you can shape it to the perfection stage where it's working of course do this if you are overwhelmed about what's going on so it's good to break things break code in baby steps and do it that way anyway guys uh, if you have any more questions let me know in comments uh, i will try to answer that and i hope this sets you in motion because preparing for interviews it's also about consistency and practice if you want to improve you have to do that consistently and i hope this these small videos uh, doing it together with me and how i write code how do i encounter problems in this case of course we were lucky that we did not find any compilation errors or wrong answer because i was also doing it with the mindset of you know i am answering this um, as like i'm giving an interview i was trying to solve this problem that way so i i was extra cautious in not making mistakes and not just doing it casually so try to do it with that mindset that um, you are really you know sitting with an interviewer in front of you that helps and uh, i hope all these like this is kind of a mock interview i hope it's it was fun to watch and at the same time you learn something let me know in comments if you have any more advices if you enjoy short written content on software engineering make sure to follow me on linkedin and twitter for pictures follow me on instagram and for programming memes again on instagram with the account i can't name variables so guys this channel has been extensively talking about data structures algorithms coding interviews even sharing my own coding interview experiences with you guys so if this is something which interests you or you are passionate about make sure to like this video subscribe to this channel and most importantly hit the bell icon it really means a lot so that's pretty much about it guys i'll see you in the next one happy coding till then bye bye